everybody, this is Jim at SP500Chart.com coming to you at about uh, 4.30 on uh, Monday afternoon, July 16th, 2012. Uh, before we get into the chart, I just need to remind you, as always, that the website and the video are for educational purposes only and nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I control lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research. And of course, you need to make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. And I'll, and I'll add to that. Also, your personal emotional situation. I'm not a licensed financial professional, just a guy that draws lines on these charts. So let's take a look. Okay, you might say this is the July 16th, 2012, I'd rather be lucky than good um, update. And the reason I say that is I drew this line right here yesterday uh, when I did the weekend update. And I said, you know, I don't know if this is going to be uh, a line of resistance here, but, uh, you know, wherever we stop and turn back and wherever we see resistance, that's where this line belongs. So uh, I haven't touched it. And if you look real closely, you'll see um, I'd rather be lucky than good because here we had the, the uh, high on last Friday. We started the, the day off a little lower by roughly what, eight or nine, eight points was it we got at one point? Uh, yeah, about. Then um, rallied up to this line, couldn't break it, came back, rallied up to it again, couldn't break it, and then started to sell off a bit into the close. Now, I want to show you something real quickly here. We're going to go back out to our hour chart, and I want to show you this pattern that we were that we were looking back, looking at. Um, let me get rid of one of those boxes. I don't know why my things duplicate. Um, I'll put a, a, a drawing on the chart, and for some reason, I'll end up with two of them rather than one. So that's what that's what happened here, and that makes it just look too dark and a little difficult to see. But what I want to show you is oftentimes when you get uh, a head and shoulders or an inverted head and shoulders pattern, uh, the, usually the right shoulder, or not usually, it's not uncommon for the right shoulder to take the form of some type of consolidation pattern. And we had it over here. Um, even though this pattern has not yet made its minimum target of about 1390, we still had what looked to be a pretty recognizable consolidation over here that led, uh, that served as a continuation pattern. If we look at our little tiny potential head and shoulders that we're looking at right here and it's it's potential because it's not yet until the until the S&P gets over this neckline right here this is all pure conjecture but just the same this has a lot of the earmarks of an inverted head and shoulders pattern and you know you just have to to, to say what it is it's what it looks like uh, one of those hallmarks is the fact that, um, that the head, once you break out of the head and you get that second touch on the neckline, often that happens after the break, uh, the breakout uh, of a descending channel in the case of an inverted head and shoulders pattern. And usually the right shoulder serves as uh, the function of it is is either to serve as a consolidation for a continuation pattern or a, a short-term reversal that would take us back down. And in this case, I would think we would find pretty good support um, just under 1340 if that happens. And the reason, we, we have a couple reasons for support. Well, we've got this, uh, this extended orange line right here that though it was violated just a bit on Thursday, we got back above it and actually closed right at it at the end of the day on Thursday. So this line will probably give some support. 
Um, but we also have this gap. And while I am not a, a believer that gaps exert some kind of magical um, vacuum that sucks the price uh, levels down into the gap, or if it's up above, it sucks them back up. I do, however, firmly believe in what I would what 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 is termed gap resistance or gap support, and what that is, all of the people who at the end of the day on the twelfth thought that thirteen thirty eight was all the S and P had to offer, so they sold. Let's just say they they had a, a an ETF. Let's or let's say they sold at thirteen thirty eight. All of a sudden, they wake up on um, on the 13th on Friday, and they see this big gap up that runs to 1356. Then what are they what are they thinking? They're thinking, "Dang, I missed an 18 point move there. That stinks." So what are they doing? Well, they're probably being a little patient, waiting for the market to come back to them. At which at which point they will likely buy and then send the markets even higher. So right now, let's uh, all we need to know right now is let's keep this on the radar as now a more legitimate looking a uh, neckline of an inverted head and shoulders pattern. Again, I'll remind you, it's not until. A confirmed head and shoulders pattern does not exist until this line is broken and broken solidly. If it does break, then we are looking for that 1390 minimum target. So guys, that's it for today. I'll keep it short and sweet. I really appreciate uh, take, your taking time out of your day to watch this. And uh, especially I thank you if you're looking at this on a Monday afternoon. I want to thank you for, uh, for supporting my work and supporting the website. Take care.